Hey, best friends. Today, we're talking about scope of practice when it comes to being an RDH and working in OMT or oral facial myofunctional therapy or oral facial myology or myofunctional therapy or whatever people are calling it these days. So <clears throat> the easiest way to kind of break this down, because there's a lot of misinformation out there, the easiest way to break this down is to liken it to being a registered dental hygienist and then going out and getting certified, like becoming a yogi. You want to be a certified yoga instructor. And so you go out and you do all that and you, yay, awesome, great. When you are a yoga instructor, are you a clinical dental hygienist? No, right? These very simple question to answer, right? So if you are Monday through Thursday doing hygiene and you're in the dental office and then on Fridays, maybe there's a spare room in the dental office and dental practice and they say that you could use that so that you can do your yoga. Okay, do your yoga girl, do your yoga guy. Make sure that, you know, you lock up when you're done. So you do your yoga on that Friday or whatever when you're off. Are you a registered dental hygienist while you're teaching yoga? Like, are you giving out clinical advice, um, oral hygiene instructions? Are you talking to people about, you know, x-rays? Are you taking any x-rays? Are you doing any probing? Will you be doing anything at all related to your clinical dental hygiene work? No? Okay. Well, if no is the answer, and I know no is the answer, but if no is the answer, then I think we already know where we stand with this. Like this is a very clean cut myofunctional therapy. Yes. While you do need to be educated as far as, you know, we have dental em embryology. We talk about um, oral oral anatomy and physiology, uh, head and neck anatomy, like we're, we're really on top of these things. We are the masters of this area here. So yes, we need the foundational skills that we have as registered dental hygienists in order to be eligible to even understand, to conceptualize, to be able to put together a myofunctional therapy program. Okay. That's, that's the, the long and the short of it. Um, but as far as the law is concerned, there is no regulatory board. There is no overarching governing body. There is nothing as far as accreditation. There is no board, no agency whatsoever. Okay. So none of that is in existence right now. What is in existence for our laws as far as our dental state practice acts in all of zero, yes, a whopping zero states. As of the date of this recording, there are no states that have it in their Dental State Practice Act where it is a part of the scope of practice or it's even mentioned myofunctional therapy, oral myofunctional therapy, oral facial myofunctional therapy, oral facial myology, or oral facial myofunctional disorders. None of those words, I challenge you to please find them. And you will find a lot of misinformation out there. There's a lot of people out there spreading all types of stuff talking about, oh my gosh, you know, I can do it in my state because it's in my state laws, or I can't do it in that state because it's not, and I'm going to move. No. I, I challenge you. I challenge you to find it in your Dental State Practice Act. I really do challenge you. It is something that I would encourage you to try to actively um, always stay on top of, okay? Because as far as speech language pathologists are concerned, it is written into the State Practice Acts, the Speech and Audiology Practice Acts in three different states. And you can message me or comment below. I'll be happy to tell you what states those are, um, but it's already in existence for other professions. So please be mindful of where you are, where you practice, how you practice, and what it is you're practicing, okay? Because you don't want to be illegally practicing in a profession that is not yours and that you don't have the law on your side for, okay? So with that being said, uh, big shout out to Brittany Sierra slash Murphy, Brittany Murphy now, she's going by fully, but a lot of you may know her as Brittany Sierra from before she was married. Um, we teach a class together where we go over this all the time and we're always drilling it into hygienists. Look, if you are looking to stay within your scope of practice, protect your license. You have to create as much differentiation as you can for that hygiene role 
because that's a separate hat that you wear when you are a clinical registered dental hygienist, you are a registered dental hygienist and myofunctional therapy. And people are like, what? Like, oh my God, I can't believe that. Like, what is it you're talking about? That doesn't make sense. You can't take off your hat. You can't take off your license. Okay, let's go back to the yoga. Okay, let's go back to the yoga. When you are teaching yoga, are you a clinical dental hygienist? Are you a registered dental hygienist? Are you using your licensure? at that moment in time, as you're teaching people downward dog and warrior pose. No, you're not at all in no regards, shape or form. So you wouldn't consider it for anything else. If you did sound therapy, if you did Reiki, if you did anything else, if you were a personal trainer, you would not consider yourself a registered dental hygienist using your license actively within the guidelines of your dates, your dental state practice act. If you were anything other than a myofunctional therapist. If you were anything other than that, you'd be able to differentiate it. Guess what? You can differentiate it for this too, okay? Make sure that you're not bouncing in and out of your schedule. Don't have 9 a.m. be your SRP and 10 p.m., uh, 10 a.m., I'm sorry, I just jump all the way down the day. And 10 a.m. be the time where you are doing um, uh, a comprehensive evaluation and intake. And then 11 a.m., you go into a recall appointment. And then, like, don't do that. It's two different trains of thought. And if you are going to drive yourself crazy, like if you're the type of person who really likes personal abuse, then sure, you go on. You do that. And, and you love it. I, I hope you love it. I want you to love it. I want that for you. I want that deeply for you. Uh, but make sure you clock in and you clock out. You clock in your hygiene. You clock out of hygiene. And you clock back in again when you're back in your hygiene role, because as far as the dental state board should be concerned, because they are a regulatory body, they are not a legislative body, they are regulatory in most of the states that I know about. You let me know if you have a legislative board, but they can't make the laws, they can only rule on what's there. And since it's not in the Dental State Practice Act, it, we're in some weird gray areas in some places. And so what that means for us is that you need to differentiate as much as possible when you are on that licensure, when you are under your licensure, when you are practicing, make sure that you distinguish 100% that this is separate. I am not a clinical dental hygienist at this moment in time, okay? Hopefully that was clear and I, I want to talk to you next time about all the different advice that I give sometimes for these new grads, like my best advice, if you just finished a class, like what's your next step? Because I know there's a lot out there. There's a lot of people marketing, a lot of stuff out there. A lot of people who try to get you to buy this, that next thing, or to take another course or to do this, that I got the advice for you, girlfriend. Okay. Or boyfriend whatever, best friend. I got the advice for you. So let's chat next time. I'm looking forward to it. If you have any questions, don't forget you can comment below. I am happy to answer them, but until next time, peace, love, and Mayo.